Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. I hope you haven't made any stupid financial mistakes like I just have. I was looking through BCA as I do, you know, this is a common story, we do this every time. We pretty much do this on a script. I've been trying to be really good and not look at older stuff and the kind of more risky, less sensible things. But it didn't stop me on this particular occasion and I saw what looked like quite a nice Jaguar XK8 2004 going through BCA Bridgewater. It's just up the road and it looked in quite nice condition. Yes, the engine management light's on. We'll get to that in a minute. And I just thought, oh, that's probably more hassle than it's worth, isn't it? And it had a cap clean price of £3,000. And I thought, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to be stupid about this. I won't bid anywhere near that. I'll put a proxy bid of £1,700 in, which would make it about two grand. If I got a Jaguar XK8 4.2 V8, for under two grand, then, you know, how, how bad could it be? It's got a long MOT, it's got like 11 months MOT. Um, and I, yeah, guess what, I want it. So, let's have a look. Look at that beauty. It's gonna clean up nice. It's not a supercharged one, so it is just the 4.2 V8, naturally aspirated, but it looks in pretty good nick. There's a little scratch here. There's a little bit of rust there, and probably, many many other things but mm, boot looks okay maybe a little bit of rust going on somewhere can't be too bad we'll have a look at the MT instrument it. it looks filthy in the back like properly grim i don't know what's been going on there but i'm sure we can clean that it's probably sat in a garage or parked outside somewhere getting damp maybe but we've got a lovely bit of walnut going on we've got a j gate selector auto um so 121,402 miles. Like I say, it does say that we had an, well, it said something about engine management light. We'll check that in a minute. Look at that, cassette player. Have we got air? We've got air conditioning though. Probably doesn't work, but we've got it. We're missing a switch. Um, they want to show us, they want to show us the back seats again because they are particularly grubby. Or are they grubby or is that damage? I don't know. We're going to find out soon, I guess. Um, because there's no wriggling out of it now. God, it looks like we've got a six disc changer in the boot. There's that scratch we looked at on the front, a bit more rust bubbling. But my theory is, you know, get it back, clean it up, put a bit of, bit of, bit of shine on it, and well, figure out the misfire that it says it's got. And you know, it's, it's retail of five grand. All right, it's not in perfect condition, but what do we get it for? Um, let's have a look actually, we can see the actual full amount. So we won it with a bid of £1,600. There was £266 of indemnities, you know, fees. Uh, £12.96 for an essential check, which gives us a grand total of £1,878.96. Now, if we can fix this without, we probably can't, but if in a fairy tale scenario, we could fix this without great expense. If it just needs a spark plug or a coil pack or something, it could be, it could be, I'm staying optimistic. Then we've bought a 4.2 V8 Jag sports car for under 1900 pounds. I'm gonna be over the moon. We need to pick it up, obviously, but will it be up to driving back if it's misfiring? How bad's the misfire? We don't know. We'll have a look at the, uh, no, well, it isn't a short report, is it? It's an essential check which isn't really worth the paper it's written on. So the handbrake's not great. It says, need some attention. And it's got engine running. It's got an exclamation mark, which requires some attention. Notes, engine bay slash engine slash misfire. It might just need a good run. The head gasket might be gone. We don't know. Both head gaskets, because it's got two of them, doesn't it? Um, but either way, surely, imagine that it misfires and you know it needs it needs a head gasket or something or i don't know like surely you could still be like two grand clean it up a little bit and be like two grand someone wanna it's got a bit of a misfire someone will take it on as a project surely probably not that's what i always tell myself is someone will take it on and that'll still be it turns out in that scenario everyone the whole world just decides no it's not worth more than 500 quid and they're probably right so I'll tell you what I will do quickly before we go and pick it up. So we need to check out, like I said, it's got about 11 minutes MOT, but I don't really know what it said on there. 
and this is potentially gonna have risk of rust and all that sort of stuff, isn't it? So I'm gonna head to vehiclescore.co.uk, enter our registration, FD04 EBA. And let's get a score. It gives you a score from one to 999, depending on its age, mileage, MIT history, and many other factors. Mmm, 379 out of 999, which is below average. The average for one of these would be 480. Some of those reasons it says age is getting on. It hasn't got a mileage discrepancy, that's good. MOT comments, very high. We'll get to those in a minute. Yearly mileage is good and mileage is okay. I wonder if it's ULIS compliant. I bet you it is. It is, so perfect. You know, car for potting around London. Tell you what we can do as well. I'd need to sign in, but we could find out how many horse ponies are in the stable of this thing. Vehicle performance, tap to reveal. 294, it's not bad actually. And the tax could be worse, it's 415 pounds for the year. This MOT history though, it's had eight failed MOTs. The last one it passed, but it did have some advisories. So brake disc, warm pit or score, but not seriously weakened near side rear and offside rear. In brackets, lack of use, question mark. Don't very often see very question marks on advisories for cars, do you? Sill covers and inner arch liners present, in brackets, factory fitted. So I guess that's there trying to say, but we can't check if the seals are rusted because it's got plastic trims on, which are factory fitted and MOT testers, you may or may not know, aren't allowed to remove things from your car and you know muck around with it too much. If it's there and they can see it, great. So if you end up getting um, uh, a lot of modern cars, they'll put advisories on now, under trays fitted, which is annoying, but somewhat understandable. They say under trays fitted, you think, well, yeah, it's a car that comes with under trays, of course they're fitted. But it just means that they say, well, I can't check if it's got an oil leak because it's got an under tray on it. So if I was allowed to take the under tray off, it might pour out of oil, but they can't. So that's, that's why they do that. Uh, suspension component mounting prescribed area is corroded, but not considered excessive. Front and rear subframes, sills and floor pan areas corroded. Underside and brake pipes coated with rust proofing. So someone's had, a, had it up on the ramp and tried to spray some kind of under seal on it or something. And offside front exhaust has a minor leak of exhaust gases, has a temp repair to offside front resource. Re resource? Exhaust. So someone's probably tried to wrap it with an exhaust wrap or something. Prior to that, it failed. What did it fail? Offside front has a major leak of exhaust gases. Uh, okay. I wonder what that's going to be about then. Because if they haven't done anything other than the only change between the failure and the pass is that the failure for the offside front exhaust has a major leak of exhaust gases has now changed to offside front exhaust has a minor leak of exhaust gases has a temporary repair to offside front exhaust. So could be bodger Rooney's under there. Anyway, enough waffling. I'm, I'm quite excited to go and check it out. And hopefully we can drive it back. So we'll join you when we get to BCA. Right, so here it is. I've got my paperwork. So we've got two sets of keys. We've got a service portfolio. How many owners have we had? Four, which is not bad. It looks all right. These are our little bits of rust that we saw. The lights look okay. Paint's looking a bit suspect here. And a bit of rust on the corner of the boot lid. That's a bit of a bummer. Of a good buff. Do have a dent removal there. Oh, it's been, it's got loads of chips where it's been opened onto things on this driver's side. That's annoying. And a bit of a, a, bit of a scuff there. We'll polish that out. Wheels look good for a good clean, but look at the tyres on them. What brand have we got? Sportium. Sport Active GT Radials. She looks all right. The window is not closed. And there's like, trim missing so I don't know what the story is there wheels and tires look good this side a few door scuffs again they weren't very careful with their doors will it work on this remote central locking we didn't bring a jump pack did we
Oh, it's beeping, so it must have some battery power. It's a spade. <laughs> there we are. Oh, it smells like a classic car in here. It's got that old wooden leather smell. What is that under there? Some kind of electrical box under the seat here. It's zip tied in. Always reassuring. Oh God, look at the, look at the sort of foam insulation-y type stuff coming out of the grill. Someone's obviously had this MOT'd in order to sell, I think, because it's quite mouldy in here. See on the dashboard and around here, look, see all the mould. It's just something they've had in the garage, I reckon. Shall we have a look under the bonnet before we start her up? This is what you like to see. Look at that. Folders and folders of stuff. That'd be fun to sort through. In the meantime, this is the type where it folds up from the... Yeah. Whoa. Look at her. What a beast. Oh, it's still warm. I suppose they have only just pulled it out. But that looks okay. It's got quite a good service history, I think. About 13 service stamps. A bit rusty around the top mounts a little bit. Cool, it's a little bit warm, so we won't bother opening that. Let's see if we can fire the old girl up. Right then, let's uh, see if the old V8 will fire up. Sounds all right. Might want a bit of power steering fluid. You don't actually have an engine management light on. They thought it was a misfire. They put it down on that sheet, didn't they? It's a misfire. It's not. It's that exhaust blow. You can hear it like popping and crackling at the front. have to get it on the ramp to find out. I bet the reason they haven't done it is because it's probably a very expensive engine out type job. Well, good news is it's not misfiring. Bad news is it does have the exhaust blow, which I think people will be more willing to live with than a misfire, to be honest. I wasn't sure if, got a bit of a flatty on there, But we might just have to risk it. How much fuel have we got? Go and get some fuel. Go and put some air in it. Got to get tray plates again, didn't I? Um, tend to do this a lot, don't I? Does the, one of the power aerial comes out if I turn the radio on? It might do if the power radio or the radio actually worked, which it doesn't seem to. Do we have, oh, we do have climate control. I've got even more stuff in the glove box. Owner's manuals and... Is this, oh, this is the original thank you letter for having purchased. Won't give away the name. Welcome to Total Care. Please keep this card with you at all times. The card's not there. That makes this car a write-off. Oh, here it is. Look at that. In-car telephone handbook. Does that mean we've got like an old-school phone in there? Yes! Look at this. Tell me that's not modern and futuristic. Unregistered SIM card. Back in the day when it was still legal to bomb around. Oh look, it's not even, you'd imagine it worked that way like most phones, but no, it's the other way around. Hello? Yes, I'm just my Jaguar. It's a bit wet under there. Maybe, just maybe, I do know a man who does custom exhaust. Maybe this will be a car to get him to do. And we may also be looking for a track car. Let's get on the road back to the garage. And if there is time today, we'll get up on the ramp and we'll have a look at what's going on underneath. Let's go. Does this window go all the way up? 
it does go all the way up, it just wasn't. Fair enough. Oh, tell me handbrake is on. It's not. So maybe the handbrake cable is broken or something. Hopefully that doesn't mean it will start binging and bonging the entire journey, because that would be very irritating. To my ear, with these windows down, that sounds more like it's not headers that's blowing, but something off of the headers, maybe a flexi or something. But I could be wrong. If it was just a flexi and we could weld a flexi in, we would be laughing. It's certainly not a quick car. To be honest, I expect a modern Volkswagen Polo would be quicker than this. Good news is our windows do still work, even though the switch is missing. Does our air conditioning actually work? It does. Air conditioning is actually cold. Do we have heated seats? So many buttons on this display, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't think we do. There's a switch on the seat or something. Well, it seems to drive as well as you'd expect for a 20 year old Jag. The build quality is as you'd expect for a 20 year old Jag. It's comfortable, certainly not fast. It's a very spongy sort of gentleman's cruiser fired up on the button. I don't know if the remote central locking was working, but it could just be a dead battery in the fob, so we'll check that out. Obviously we've got the handbrake warning on, even though, ah uh, yeah, the handbrake cable's obviously, I know it, it's not snapped. It, oh, it's gone off now. Okay, so the handbrake was basically on the floor, but it was warning me that the handbrake was on. It wasn't, I could feel that it wasn't on. I assumed the cable had snapped and that's why but actually, if I, I mean, it's very bad, very bad, but it does create some drag, kind of. But now it's down to the floor and it's gone off. So in my opinion, if, I think what's gonna be the case with this is uh, I've made a stupid purchase and I need to take the easiest route out of it going. Not in a million years would I clean this up and try and fix everything on it and retail it from Barrow Motors for whatever it says is retail, it's five grand. Because I may as well set fire to 3,000 pounds and smack my head against a wall just to incur the expense and pain early on rather than going through the hassle of selling it to someone and you know, drawing that pain out over a longer period of time. So I think what I need to do is check out that exhaust blow and then, you know, stick it up for three grand or something as a cheap car project for someone. Handbrake needs adjusting. If we can sort the blow out, then all well and good. Um, and you might get three grand for it. Maybe a little bit more, I don't know. You might get three and a half for it, if you're lucky. Radio doesn't seem to work, but that could just be a fuse. So there's a few things to check out, give it a good valet. Oh, the radio's working now. Has, yes, our aerial popped up as well. I wonder why that wasn't. I wonder if some of these buttons are just a bit damp and not really seen much use. Don't actually have a tuned in station. There we are. Radio 1. I imagine this is the first time Radio 1's ever been played in this car. So yeah, if the exhaust blow isn't too bad of a fix, then I think, I think I've done alright. But if it is, and it's something off the manifold and it needs a new manifold, then I could instantly be into a loss because I bet you it would be a nightmare on this. The labour costs would ruin me. So yeah. I'm going to chuck some fuel on it because it's literally resting on the needle stop. We will give it a clean 
and let it cool down, get it in the workshop, and we'll find out what's going on mechanically. Just filled her up with 30 quid's worth of petrol, which has given me just over a quarter of a tank. Funnily enough, Toby went to another pump and put some diesel in my old BMW. I went in to pay for both at the same time. I said, yeah, pump number two and three, please. She's like, oh, good. Oh, I was just keeping an eye on number two, whichever one Toby was on, because he's, he's got a cap on and he's got a big jacket on and it doesn't look right. It's very suspicious looking, our Toby. Especially in a white BMW. If we're lucky, when I left to go and pick this up, Mike from MW Dent Repairs was at Barrow Motors sorting out some dents for us. So, if he's still there when we get back, he might take the dent out of this for us. Which, regardless of whether or not we get the exhaust blow sorted, I think it's worth it for 45 quid to get the dent sorted out. It's one less thing people can pick at. Is that what it is? Ah. Several days later. Right, so here we are back in the Jag XK8, which I think may be the best £1,900 I've ever spent. It's now cleaned up. In fact, I cleaned it with my very own hands, and I'm quite impressed with my handiwork, to be honest. It's unusual that happens, but I think I did a, a pretty good job of bringing this old girl back to her former glory. I was sweating absolute buckets doing it, though. Got all the mildew and mould and everything off the dashboard. I even kind of cleaned up the seats. They're just looking so much fresher. The majority, the vast majority of all the weird gunk and everything that was on the back seat came off. I think they probably just had a dog or something in there of a bit of mud. And obviously we had this on the ramp and found what that exhaust blow was. There was a hole right next to a union, manifold, whatever you call it. Um, and Steph managed to just weld a little plate over that. So it's quite a decent repair. And now she's very quiet and refined. In fact, there's practically zero exhaust tone whatsoever, but that's probably what you're expecting in your gentleman's cruiser Jag XJ8. It really is silky smooth though. And this thing drives so well for its age and the mileage. It just wafts along. It's really obviously been well looked after. And what amazes me is that absolutely everything works. Well, absolutely everything bar one thing. The remote central locking does not seem to want to play ball. Um, Dan tried reprogramming the keys for me, but he just didn't have any luck. He thought maybe someone had tried re reprogramming them before. But I don't think it's an insurmountable problem. Someone could fix it, I'm sure, but we're just not gonna get involved. The central locking works, you put the key in, turn it, lock it, unlock it, that all works. Uh, the alarm works, but it's just not working off the fob. Check the batteries and all that obvious stuff, obviously. Uh, but something with it is not quite working. I mean, it's it's receiving signals because he was running through a process of kind of teaching uh, the car the, the keys and it should have pressed the button on the fob and it should have beeped five times. It didn't, it beeped twice. Um, so there's something weird going on, but we're not gonna get involved with that. Not for the money we spent, not for how cheaply I think we are gonna be selling this. But remote central locking aside, our air conditioning is probably the coldest air conditioning I've experienced in a long time. It's like icy cold, like painfully cold. Um, our electric adjustable wing mirrors all work perfectly. There's nothing broken with that. Cruise control works perfectly. The radio works perfectly. Uh, you put it into sport mode and it does everything it should. It goes along slightly less slowly. To be fair, actually, when you do wind it up, It takes a lot to build the momentum, but when you've got it, you've got it. It's a bit like driving a powerboat, I reckon. Because once you're up to speed, you're going in a straight line. There's not much 
turning or changing of direction is going to go on and you won't be changing speed very quickly either because it's just not really up to it i mean that's, that's probably unfair the brakes are quite good but it does feel quite wallowy and boat like so it turns out this thing has got absolutely stacks of paperwork all in a nice ring binder which is always really nice to see you know it's been owned by someone who cares for it uh, it's got books and book packs and joining membership letters from the Jaguar XK EC enthusiast group so you know it's being owned by an enthusiast and I also found the last sale listing for this which the previous owner had kept uh, it was on eBay Motors he's taken pictures of it and this had sold for £9,000 in 2020 Actually, I didn't pay too much attention to what the mileage was, but I noticed in that description it said that it's just had bodywork repairs by Tom Lenthal. Some of you may recognise that name if you watch the Auto Alex channel. I've seen him on there a few times. He does classic car restorations and jags and stuff, so I can't personally say that I, I couldn't find any paperwork to say that this had been at Tom Lenthal's for any kind of repairs, but it definitely has had some bodywork repairs. You can see there's a few blend lines where things have been painted in and kind of touched up which is probably the rear arches um, because I think these go for a pastime on these. I haven't had that dent redone because Mike the dent man was here I did show it to him and he said uh, you know he'd have to either drill a hole in the arch itself to get access well, as, as original theory um, which you probably don't want to do inside an arch on something that rusts out like a jag but then he did say, actually, he seems to remember that you can take the rear seats out quite easily and then you can access that um, kind of rear quarter panel. But he was getting on with doing other jobs and it wasn't a rush. And I said, well, do you know, actually, I probably got a bit carried away thinking I spent 45 quid on it. He did say it's got paint in there. It's been repainted as well. So he wouldn't want to use his glue kind of puller thing because it might take the paint off. I sort of somewhat decided I'd just leave it for now because, you know, this is never going to be concourse standard but it is going to be a fairly decent and honest, usable classic for someone. I mean, does it get much better than this, really? You've got a V8. It's a nice J-Gate Auto. You've got your music. You've got ice-cold air conditioning. You've got cruise control. It's even got automatic lights, actually. It's quite well-equipped, really. This, if you want to take a cruise down the coast or something what a car for doing that now i've got to say it doesn't normally work out this well when i buy things on an impulse at auction but i think i've done really well here auto trader tells me that the retail for this car is about five grand i'm not going to ask that for it and i'm not going to sell it from barrow motors it's going to be something that sophie can sell um still through us and still under the consumer rights and whatever but it's just not related to the garage she can put it up for sale from the farm and i reckon ask about three and a half grand for it 1500 quid under retail value and about 1500 quid over what we spent on it so meeting somewhere in the middle i think this is a hell of a car for three and a half grand great service history long mot in really good condition nicely valeted up just think it's great i actually really like it i just, somewhat tempted to keep it as I am with all these types of things that I buy but I can't I just can't again this is another car that is testament to how important it is to maintain your car baby it really take care of it because 121 and a half thousand miles the automatic gearbox is absolutely faultless the engine is smooth as silk got lucky with the fact that it said it had a misfire and it didn't what we what it was was that exhaust blow obviously um it's you know got loads of history for having had the gearbox and engine service new spark plugs all that sort of stuff and it really is a great example so there you have it i think i lucked out let me know what you think in the comments i'm fairly confident we'll get well at least 3250 for this someone might knock us down a little bit when they come to see it but still we're talking about a 1200 quid profit gross you know before we take out all of the vat and all that sort of stuff I still think it's a great result and I've got to enjoy a lovely Jaguar as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you're one of my subscribers, when we hit 75,000, I am giving away a 2,000 pound Tag Heuer Formula One watch and you will automatically be entered 
into the draw to win that. By the time this video goes live, I think my Corsa VXR raffle will have ended on feelgoodcompetitions.com. Well, I can't tell you what it is right now because simply I don't know. Head to the website feelgoodcompetitions.com and check out what car is currently being raffled for just two pounds and get yourself involved. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.